me, Mr. Mills. Morning, Ellis. Good morning. Good morning, mate. Stone me. She's come back to work. Mum, I was preoccupied when you came in. I didn't realise, you understand. Oh, it's all right, Mr Mills. I didn't want to bother you. Oh, if I'd known, I'd had the front entrance open and the director's elevator working. You, you, you haven't come to... Uh... Oh, I just came in to collect a few things. Oh, yes, yes, of course. All right, girls, now back to you. Oh, 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 I talk for the moment. Begging your pardon, Mum. I mean, uh, knowing how conscientious you are, Still, that wouldn't do now, would it, Mum? Wouldn't it? Oh, no, Mum. I mean, you're uh, in command now, so to speak, Mum. Couldn't have you working, could we? Couldn't we? Set a very bad example, that would, Mum. Would it? Oh, yeah. Well, let me take these things, shall I, Mum? Oh, well, I think everything's here. Uh, there's all except two dusters. I got them at home in the wash. I'll bring them in on Friday. Yes, I see to it, Mum. Hey, you won't want this little lot again, Mum. Well, you never know. <laughs> Thank you, Mum. Now, I expect you'd like to go to your private sanctum, Mrs. Thursday, Mum. This way, Mum. No, I don't think I'll be. Oh, now, don't worry, Mum, don't worry. I'll have the cleaners out of here in no time. Uh, please. Well, there we are now. Are there any little requirements uh, I can obtain for you, Mum? No, thank you, Mr Mills. Oh, well, then I'll get back on duty, as the saying is, Mum. And may I add how very grateful and pleased I am to hear of your good fortune. Oh, well, thank you very much, Mr Mills. <laughs> some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Yes. Yes, I remember my old CO, Colonel Cook Waterby, saying those very words to me the day he made me up to company sergeant major, Mum. Henry. Yes. Uh, now come along, girls, if you please. You can finish your plate. There's no hurry, uh, really. It's all right. There's no hurry. As you wish, Mum. Don't make a meal of it now. I see they put Sylvie with you. Yep. You'll like it on this floor, Sylvie. Nice crowd of girls. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Always got on well together, haven't we, Ethel? Mm -hmm. Very well. Can I have my duster, please? What? Oh, I wasn't thinking. Ethel, I don't want it to make no difference. What? Oh, you know the money on that. It will, won't it? Stands to reason, doesn't it? Well, that ought to do, Sylvie. Time for a cup of tea before we start on the vice chairman. OK. I hope everything's to your satisfaction. No, it is not. Oh? 
And what's wrong, may I ask, madam? Madam, madam, who do you think you're talking to, Ethel Turner, eh? Who do you think you're talking to? I'm talking to you, madam, just because you've got a few million quid. Doesn't mean you can insult me. Insult you? Oh, I like that. Do you hear that, Sylvie? Me insult you? I never opened my mouth till you started telling me I didn't know my work. I said no such thing. Oh, that's calling me a liar. And you call me madam? Well, you are a madam, madam. You say that again, Ethel, and I'll... What? I do, you. Oh, you and who else? There you are. What did I tell you? Comes in here large as life and starts laying down the law. Yeah. Didn't take her long, did it? No. Oh, you can't be criticised, can you? Oh, no. You're so part perfect. Listen, just because your ear rolls are hanging in diamonds, that don't give you the right... It gives me as much right as you or anybody else. What did you come in for, anyway? To show off? Let us see the new governor. What did I come in for? Well, if you don't know that, Ethel, I'm not going to tell you. We've worked together here for years. We've scrubbed and polished these offices on our bended knees. And if you don't know me after all that... Well, why did you come in? You didn't have to. I don't know. I couldn't sleep in. So used to getting up early. I suppose I'd come in from force of habit. And I thought I'd like to see you all. Well, I suppose <clears throat> now that you are here, you'd like a cup of tea. <laughs> See? Cost your threepence, won't it? We can't afford to pay for your tea, you know. Uh, here. Can we have it in here? Oh, I don't know. Uh, yes, why not? Yes, yes bring it oh, in oh, here. Oh, Morning, morning. Good morning, Mr. Lever. Morning, love. Ah, oh, Charles, saw you drive up. Joe, would you tell Mrs. Thursday we're here, please? She isn't at home, sir. Now, where is she? she? The car's gone to get her. She's expected any minute. Oh, in that case, we'll wait, eh, Joe? All right. Edna. Who's that? Charles Barker and Mr. Lever. Ah, did the florist send oh. my... Uh... Sin, Santa. Excellent. Hmm, a horticultural triumph. And the finishing touch, if you wouldn't mind, Edna. You intend to stay on, Edna? Oh, yes. Oh, I'm delighted to hear it. You approve of Mrs. Thursday, then, I take it. Oh, I think she's lovely. You intend to stay, Mr. Hunter? Yes, indeed. Mrs. Thursday's been kind enough to offer me a position as her business and uh, financial advisor. You're joking. I have accepted the situation. I felt it my duty to help. <laughs> but you can't even make your own wages go round. You owe me a pound from three weeks ago. I think I'll take this opportunity of having a powwow with Sir Charles and Mr. Lever, our Venezuelan oil holdings I'm rather concerned about. <laughs> you had better announce me, I think. What? Don't say what. Well, I mean announcing you. Now, when I think of what you tried on upstairs not two weeks ago, and what you tried on the An kitchen... error of judgment. I misread your character. Yes, you did, didn't you? And I apologized. Only after I hit you with the sword. A defensive me. action, which did you credit? Hmm. Now, if I taught Terry... Terry? Oh, 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 yes, your friend with the motorbike. But you won't, will you? You haven't, have you? Go on. Get in with the knob. Edna, I worship you. Uh -uh. Oh, from a distance, of course. Hmm. Mr. Richard Byron. What? Go on. Mr. Richard Byron Hunter. <laughs> Morning, gentlemen. Where's Mrs. Thursday? Is she back yet? We must see her before the board meeting this afternoon. Oh, she should be here any moment now. Ah, do I see the Financial Times? Uh, do you mind? Thank you. Yes, you might well shake your head. The Dundridge Group shares were their lowest for ten years. This is damned uncertainty. We must know Mrs. Thursday's intentions. Tell me, Sir Charles, do you think Frankfurt will continue its restrictive monetary policy? I fail to see whether... Well, Zurich had a weak trend, too, yesterday. It's bad. Bad. Look, damn Frankfurt and damn Zurich. Now, what I, I want to know is... Mr. Lever, but we operate in a world financial market. 
I was wondering about Canadian nickel. What does Mrs. Thursday intend to do? We must know. She surely doesn't mean to take an active part in the group's affairs. Yeah, she may. Mm -hmm. Then again, she may not. Well, Mr. Lever and I have discussed that matter, and we have agreed that he would be the best choice as a new chairman. Oh? Uh -huh. And I intend to nominate Sir Charles as managing director. Really? But we must have Mrs. Thursday's support. If I might make a suggestion, Mr. Lever. Yes, what is it? That tie. Clashes violently with the suit. If I might venture a word of advice, a discreet polka dot grey, perhaps... Now, look here, Hunter. Stop jackassing about... Oh, I'm quite serious, Mr. Lever. If you're to be the new chairman, it's essential... You mean we can rely upon her support? Well, uh... You know her plans. You have discussed it with her. Well, at odd moments, uh, in passing, so to speak. And what did you advise? Ah, come on, come on. No, 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 don't press him, Joe, don't press him. Naturally, he cannot reveal the nature of any private conversation he may have had with Mrs. Thursday, but uh, I think we can take it that he advised her in the right way. Mm. Eh, Hunter? She does tend to rely upon my judgment. Mm, capital, excellent. Well, well, you'll not be forgotten, Hunter, depend on that. Uh, yes, Edna, what is it? Fate has just come back to the car, sir. Oh, where's Mrs. Thursday? She wasn't at home, he said. A neighbour said she went out at six to go to the office, as usual. The office? What's she up to there? Come on. Introducing the Dunrich Ladies Choir in that wonderful old favourite, the Cleaners Chorus. <laughs> You'll break that machine. <laughs> hey, come on, girls, get down the line. No, wait, wait, wait. I want to make a phone call. I think I'll phone Frank Sinatra in Hollywood. <laughs> no, wait, Alice. Your daughter, the youngest. Now, where is she living? Canada, in it? In Hamilton. Well, why don't you ring her? Go on, ring her. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, I've never heard on. such a thing. Oh, it's a wonderful idea. Come on, Alice yeah. should have the shock of her life when she hears no, you. No, I couldn't, now. Go on. No. It's your phone, and it? You got her number? I've got it somewhere. Oh, oh, come on, then. <laughs> come on, I'll get it for you. Right, fine. Uh, hello? Oh, hello. Uh, this is Mrs. Thursday's private secretary speaking. <laughs> uh, I would like you to connect me with Hamilton, Canada, please. Yes, the telephone number is 231-4590. <laughs> well, of course it's priority. What? You'll ring me back? Oh, thank you. <laughs> they are single, isn't it? I've got a sister in Australia. Of course. <laughs> What's right, as long as they are... 